And listen, last week uh, I re expressed my and many other Conservatives' extreme dissatisfaction with a group of Liberal MPs who had been thanked by Get Up for standing up to the climate wreckers. As I said, being embraced by uh, Get Up should be the kiss of death for any gen genuine Liberal. The five named by Get Up were Katie Allen, Tim Wilson, Jason Falinski, Dave Sharma, and Trent Zimmerman. Dave Sharma chose to go onto Twitter and uh, sort of had a crack at me, which is fair enough. But I was extremely impressed to be contacted by Tim Wilson, the Liberal member for Goldstein in Victoria. And I immediately asked him if he would be happy to come on Outsiders to put his case. Tim joins us now. Great to see you, Tim. How are you? Good. Good to see you, Rowan. Thanks so much for coming on. We'll chat nuclear power in a second. But first, can I just ask you, what is the difference between a Liberal and a modern Liberal? Well, modern Liberal is a term that Sir Robert Menzies used to describe himself, <laughs> a forward-looking modern Liberal Party, and that's what I've always espoused. And more critically, he always said that the Liberal Party should be focused on the future and defining the future because the alternative is you simply end up being dragged to a socialist alternative. And I'm not prepared to accept that. I'm always want to uh, define the terms of debates, whether it's making sure young Australians can buy their own home over being compelled to prioritise superannuation or the energy debate as well. Uh, Rita. How do you feel about gaining GetUp's endorsement? Uh, that doesn't sound like something Robert Menzies would be proud of. Well, I don't think any of us uh, sort it. It just comes. I unfortunately can't, in a free society, uh, describe or do uh, you know, dictate what other people say about us. Um, some people say getting Rowan Dean's endorsement may not be uh, or might be its own form of kiss of death as well, Rowan. So uh, it is what it well, is. I know, someone um, who, but... I know someone who I did endorse as a Liberal, not as a modern well, Liberal, but I remember well, that, yes. Well, but the, there the you go, and he succeeded, and he succeeded. Yep. The, the absurdity is that um, we got it for backing what is Liberal Party policy. Liberal Party policy says that uh, the government isn't going to fund a new coal-fired power station. That's a position the Treasurer's outlined, the Prime Minister's outlined. Um, and so simply stating the obvious to me, what we took to the Australian people, uh, if that gets us plaudits, well, I guess great. <laughs> James. So, Tim, let's talk nuclear here. First of all, can you underline your support for nuclear, particularly new technologies such as these small modular reactors? And when you saw uh, a group of nationals uh, the other day, including Matt Canavan and Bridget McKenzie, come out and say the Clean Energy Finance Committee should be uh, able to invest in this technology, would you and your fellow modern liberals back that in? <laughs> Uh, well, my position on nuclear has always been supportive because I think uh, it's, I mean, it's got to be part of a discussion that's taken to an election. But if you want to have uh, cheaper energy in supply, lower emissions, uh, and of course, reliability, you need baseload energy. And our nuclear fits the bill uh, very well. Um, but that's always been my view and always will be my view. So uh, I, and I think we just need to be honest. Frankly, I don't think you can be. Um, serious about trying to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions if you're not prepared to have nuclear on the table. Um, but the bill that was put forward uh, by the, the Liberal Party and the National Party that the Nationals are talking about amending has already gone through the party room. So I respect the party room and the fact that it should go through that process and shouldn't be amended by its own supporters. If we want to have this conversation, fine, and, and I'm quite you know, happy to, but it should be done separately from that. So, Tim, would you say that a modern Liberal is basically against coal and a Liberal is for coal? Is that the distinction? Because I'm trying to get what the distinction is. If Menzies was a modern Liberal, then surely all Liberals are modern Liberals. I'm still struggling to get what the distinction between the two is. Uh, I, I'm, I kind of guess the idea is anti-coal makes you a modern Liberal and possibly pro-coal makes you a Liberal. But by that definition, Joel Fitzgibbon is a Liberal all of a sudden. This is where I get confused, Tim. Help me no, out. I, I, I think you're getting too, too heavy on the semantics, Rowan. The point is to always be focused on the future and defining the future. It's not on specific issues. Now, I'm pro-technology. I've always been pro-technology and I always will be pro-technology because of its potential to improve the living standards of Australians, to enable Australia to be um, a more successful country, to be able to have the cheap energy to build an energy base, but I don't believe in investing in outdated technology no, so, so you agree, that isn't going to solve, which isn't, a, 
which isn't going to address what we need as a country. And the reality is, um, you know, coal has been a significant part of our past. Um, it's part of our present, but it's going to be a diminishing share of our future. And but you, you recognise that we must... Every single politician you, you, seems to agree with that. Yeah, you recognise... Sorry, and Tim. Sorry, Tim. For it. You, you, OK, Tim. But you recognise we must have nuclear, that without nuclear we can't, uh, we can't get rid of coal. We must have nuclear, correct? Well, I have said it quite clearly. I support nuclear, and it's got to yeah, be but, but, part of that conversation. But do you do you still support uh, shutting down coal if we don't have nuclear? Because we talk about cheap, reliable forms of energy. If you don't have nuclear to back up renewables, uh, how are you going to do that for the Australian uh, businesses and households? But that's why we've been talking very clearly about the role of gas, both as dealing with peaking. Um, and uh, as part of uh, the base load of the energy system. Um, well, as coal phases out, you're going to need reliable alternatives, and it's not just going to be solar PV cells. It's got to be things like um, a hydroelectric power as well, which provide the base. And then on top of that, that's why, I've, that's why I've been quite open. Yes, I think nuclear needs to be part of that conversation, and a majority of my colleagues believe that as well. Uh, Tim Wilson, thanks so much for coming on Outsiders and look forward to you advocating strongly in the party room for nuclear because that's what Outsiders have been doing for the last four years. So you can come on any time you like, Tim, and thank you so much for coming on today. There you go. You're being part of the future conversation, Rowan. Maybe you're a modern liberal too. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thanks, Tim. Take care. Thank you. Coming up, we've got lots happening. Rita's reality check, plus we'll be chatting to Calvin Robinson.